My name is Bryn Johnson. I'm one of the chainring engineers here at SRAM, working on a new uh, red crank set uh, chainring design. Uh, in my specific case, I was working on the 5034 compact chainring combination. One of the big uh, challenges with the chainring design and the whole new yaw front shifting design uh, is that it's a no trim system on the shifter, meaning that you can't make fine adjustments to the front derailleur to add extra chain clearance when you're at the extremes of the gear range. So one of the things that, that we had to do that was a big challenge with the new chainring set is essentially move them apart wider. So you have more range for the chain to move back and forth between the small chain ring and the smallest cog and the largest cog without rubbing on the chain ring or chain ring rubbing on the derailleur. So that is a, as a first step. We're changing all the spacing. It, it adjusts all the timing and everything between the rings. Um, we also wanted to take a big step up in shifting quality, which essentially means redesigning everything from, uh, from a blank piece of paper. Uh, we wanted to increase the stiffness of the chain ring. Stiffness is a big component in um, front shifting when you're up shifting from the small ring to the big ring. If you have a really flexy chain ring, the derailleur pushes the chain against it, the ring just flexes, it doesn't go up. So you'll notice on the new red chain rings, they're made from much uh, thicker, stouter material, and uh, there's a huge uh, stiffness increase versus our previous efforts. In the case of uh, um, the yaw derailleur and, and particularly the, the, the compact chain rings, just draping a piece of chain on here to, to show you, the yaw derailleur has an incredible upshifting and downshifting force, so it is much superior to our, uh, our previous designs. What that means is where um, a great amount of effort would, would have been required to make the chain ring shift on numerous teeth. With the new yaw derailleur, it's basically going to shift almost instantly in, in, in almost any position on the chain ring. So what you'll, what you'll get is you need to add more upshift opportunities to the chain ring design. And basically, as, as you can see on a, on a 50 tooth outer chain ring, which I'll show you on the 3D model shortly, is every single tooth on the entire chain ring is enabled to downshift. So it's not a case where these ones are going to shift, these ones are not. It's that derailleur works so well that it will actuate a shift in any position. So we have to compensate for that in the chain ring design by adding features and geometry to allow the chain to uh, uh, deflect smoothly uh, off the chain ring and down to the mating chain ring. So more upshift, uh, more upshift locations as well. I'm just again draping a chain ring on. Um, we've got actually six rivets around the periphery of the chain ring, so there's six opportunities for a nice smooth upshift. We try to space them apart fairly widely, so if you happen to you happen to miss one, you have a couple more opportunities for the chain to shift up onto the uh, onto the big ring. Every rider's different; they'll tend to get a uh, um, tend to actuate a shift somewhere in their pedal stroke, somewhere in their power stroke differently. So one rider may tend to always shift in that position, but if you only had a rivet there and the next rider tends to shift when they're down lower in their pedal stroke, they'll miss that one and have to come around again. Um, one of the other things, again, with uh, um, a, call it a powerful front derailleur, is that it will, it can actually force the chain to shift in places maybe that are not optimized or intended, so we have to compensate for those as well. So in the, uh, the non-rivet positions, there's numerous geometry created to let the chain shift up in all kinds of additional spots. So similar to what I was explaining with the downshift, there's actually geometry created in the chain ring so it can shift up anywhere around the periphery of the chain ring. Again, equaling a faster shift rather than actuating the lever and having to wait for the thing to go around a half turn or whatever until you get to a spot where it's going to go up. The software we use here to design everything is called Pro Engineer. It's a 3D uh, CAD modeling software, very sophisticated. All the best bicycle companies in the world use this, uh, use this software to achieve the best results. This is an example of the backside of, uh, of the chain ring. So you have all the shifting features for up and down shifting and stuff. The front side is typically a little bit more simple. You have, a, you have the outside that's the industrial design look. So that's the, uh, the features that our industrial design group have come up with to give it the, you know, the good looks. And then basically the, the features on the chain ring teeth are the ones that are designed to uh, let the uh, chain get up and down smoothly. 
case of a chain ring, you're starting with something you know pretty simple, a disc of aluminum in the, in the correct thickness and stuff, and create a, a tooth form profile in the ring. The tooth form is actually something that's actually incredibly important, incredibly complex, and every single chain ring is different. The tooth form profile is a, is a complex combination of angles and radii and, and curvature is to you know, create the geometry that allows the chain roller to roll on and off smoothly and, and engage the chain and carry a high load. This is probably one of the biggest things that you have to figure out the path that the chain will take on a given downshift ramp between the large chain ring and the small chain ring. And again, noting that the chain can shift anywhere it wants kind of thing. And you'll have some optimized spots and some spots that you'll have to compensate for. You can see this model, the chain can, will shift down from the, from the large ring to the small ring. You'll notice on chain rings, if you look at, look at them closely, they've actually got a lot of different sized and shaped teeth. So as I, uh, like sort of zoom in on there, you can see there's different sizes and different shapes and they'll be in upshift or downshift spots. Sometimes you need higher ones, sometimes you need lower ones, depending on if you want to let the chain get up, chain go down, guide it smoothly. So you'll have a wide array of different actual two shape sizes and tip geometry. You can see that again, there is a, there's a lot of, uh, you know, in, intense design that goes into chain rings and it kind of is a specialty, you know, as, as with sort of every, every component on the bike. And that's sort of the way SRAM works is that engineers are, are specializing in a certain areas. In the case of top of the line red, you know, there's no uh, compromises on achieving maximum performance. Thank you.